the Bible talks about or the Bible speaks of two kingdoms in the universe. Okay? So let's, last week's episode or broad, broadcast was about the beginning. Okay? Uh, the, two op- the two opposing kingdoms tapos subtitle <laughs> the beginning or referring to the creation to the first rebellion and to the formation of a counter kingdom okay okay uh, how why uh, where did that second kingdom came from how did it started okay so this is that was the formation of a counter kingdom the opposite king the opposing kingdom okay mm. so that's why uh, you need to watch the the last the previous episode because for you to understand to have the foundation why there are two or two opposing kingdoms okay? it's on the comment section uh, uh, the link yes the link is all on right the that's section. that's one so again uh, last week Part 1 was about the beginning which refers to the creation, okay? The first rebellion and the formation of a counter kingdom. Okay? So today the second part is about the reason or the importance of this series, all right? Then we will continue where we left. So first uh, let me give you a clear clearer de- def- definition of kingdom okay I-, I realized last week it was a a very brief definition of kingdom okay but now I'm gonna add something else all right okay. so the concise and biblical definition for kingdom okay first uh, kingdom means rulership okay remember that when you read the kingdom of God the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven when the word ki- if you read the word kingdom especially in the new testament it means rulership or the, the the authority the power the control the influence okay one word rulership mm-hmm. all right why because if uh, if there's a kingdom then there's the king a king so oh, yes. a kingdom consists of a king okay king second territory third Laws, fourth subjects, okay, that comprises a kingdom, because without a king, or, or without a territory, okay, without a territory, <laughs> without subjects, without laws, <laughs> there is no king, okay, and if there is a king, but doesn't have territory, no subjects, mm-hmm. no laws, nothing to govern, all right. <laughs> So the thing is, four things uh, basically essential, um, essential components. Okay, that comprises kingdom is what king, territory, laws, subjects, meaning say people that are under him, under that king. So that's a kingdom. Okay, so kingdom means rulership. Kingdom means what? Uh, the the territory the laws and the subjects to govern by the king okay now third uh, definition the two realms or the two boundaries or territorial domains of this kingdom okay where this kingdom operates where this kingdom function where this kingdom operates okay so we have two first the spiritual and the physical realm okay remember that right now When Jesus said, uh, the kingdom of God has come upon you, Mm. what he meant is the spiritual kingdom, okay, which is the now kingdom. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit comes on you, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Meaning to say his rulership, his influence, okay. Now the Holy Spirit is the one guiding you, leading you, helping you, okay, helping you grow helping you understand he quicken your spirit so that's the kingdom of god has come upon you now you understand the bible now the bible makes sense to you because you're born again that's the kingdom of god in you okay so now there is righteousness peace joy in the holy ghost that's the kingdom of god okay so that's what we meant by spiritual uh realm of the kingdom and the physical realm 
uh, one day, okay, in the near future, Jesus is gonna come and is going to establish a tangible kingdom, Ooh. okay, a physical one. It's not something spiritual only, but something that is, you know, you can touch, you know, it, it's physical, it's all real. right? Yeah. So it's His coming, okay, and we're excited. And I'm praying that He would take us to Himself <laughs> as soon as possible. Okay, so uh-huh. anyway, so spiritual and physical realm. Now, another dimension is what we call the now kingdom and the future kingdom. So don't, uh, don't uh, get us wrong, okay? Because why I wa- why am I emphasizing these two sides of the coin? So we have the now kingdom and the f- future kingdom. So when you say the future kingdom, God's kingdom, God, God is going to establish the promised messianic kingdom. Okay? The promised messianic kingdom will happen and uh, some theologians would like to call it the millennial kingdom. Okay, it's going to establish it here on earth. That's a perfect government. Okay, and it's going to come. So we're, we're telling you ahead. So that's the future kingdom. And the other one is the now kingdom. Now there are teachers who are emphasizing so much on the now kingdom. Like now, everything is here. Everything is now. And there's no more future. Okay, and, and you will have a problem with that kind of theology. Okay, uh, because for them there is no more heaven there's not no rapture there's you know uh, i don't want to add okay okay so you can watch uh, uh captain amir Sar- major amir sarfati and his teachings on that <laughs> but uh, he makes a lot of comment on 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 false teachings okay about that's why in in uh in uh, the messianic jews believe in both now kingdom uh topic is actually one of the most controversial doctrines of the bible okay mm. you think rapture is the a controversial teaching not much okay because the kingdom I- I- I doctrine is a big issue in the bible because, because if you put so much emphasis on one part and not on the other leave the other then you have a problem again uh, an airplane cannot fly without using both right wings. wings okay okay so you can you need a balance okay yeah. to understand the bible so the same thing you need to understand there is a spiritual and physical realm and there is a now and future kingdom yeah okay so jesus is coming and it's not gonna be spiritual where you cannot see him he's invisible no he's gonna <laughs> come second time around he's gonna yes. come okay he's gonna come all right, so again, kingdom means rulership, and a kingdom consists of a king, territory, laws, and subjects. And we have the two realms, which is the spiritual and physical realm, mm-hmm. which also is associated to the now kingdom and the future kingdom. Oh. Okay, I'm so amazed and blessed how Messianic Jews, even in commentaries, expound on the now and the future kingdom in the new testament amazing amazing so anyway that's not my topic our topic is just a small part the kingdom okay the two now uh, particularly on the two opposing kings so last week we have established okay this is a very brief review last week we have established that god made the heavens and the earth and he legally owns everything Mm -hmm. so therefore he is king the rightful ruler over all his creation because he's the maker right he's sovereign therefore in short okay this is a review god is the maker god is the owner and god is the ruler again god is the maker god is the lawful or legal owner and the third one is god is the ruler he rules Okay, he, uh, he, he, he's king, so he has a kingdom. Now, we established that God does have a kingdom because God created the universe. Okay, the, the universe, 
which is the boundary of his jurisdiction. Okay, that is the area, the territorial domain. So, uh, what's the limit of God's jurisdiction, uh, authority, territorial dominion? The whole universe. He created it, the heavens and the, the earth. earth. Okay, so he created his subjects, the angelic host. And the human beings, he gave them free will or volition. And so, and he establishes laws. Okay, when he created Ed, Adam and Eve, they, 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 he gave laws. Okay, so the thing is this. So God from the very beginning is the king. Okay, and he has a kingdom because he has a, a territorial dominion, domain. He has a, a territorial jurisdiction or... Uh, uh, boundary okay and then he has subjects mm. okay uh, and he has laws hmm. and he's king okay yeah. where he is king so again it's complete all right he is the maker he made everything so he owns everything and so he has the right to rule over everything yeah amen all right and also last week we gave you the scriptures we also established that god is god forever and there is no other before or after him okay god is god forever and that is final and fixed no one can change that he said i am the lord or i am yahweh that is my name. name that's what the bible that's what the lord said and he will live forever and he reveals the remember that yeah he reveals what will happen in the future okay and that is why we know what's gonna happen that's why we're teaching you the truth because we already know the whole story some people are you know having problems what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen next? most people this are not you know in the spirit who are not really reading the scriptures or cannot understand scriptures do not know what's gonna happen but god gives us a hint it's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why we're encouraging you to read end time prophecies. I am not into um, conspiracies where it's like theory and it's not true. It's opinion. Opinion or whatsoever. We're not after conspiracies, friends. We are, okay, we are looking into biblical prophecies. The Word of God. Yes. The author of everything. He knows where things are leading into so now um that's why he said i'm the o i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end all right uh now about the beginning or formation of the counter kingdom this is what we established last week the formation of the counter kingdom where did, did this all started the, the 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 other kingdom okay we established that the guardian sherub okay rebelled and strongly desired to be like God okay he wants to imitate God and replace God as ruler over everything okay so he's always imitating what God has he's always doing that okay and if you want to know where in scriptures does it say that the guardian serum turned against God Okay, from Lucifer to Satan, from, the, you know, <laughs> you better review or broad uh, or, or or watch our broadcast last week. Okay, it's loaded with scriptures, uh, the, from from Isaiah, from Ezekiel, you know, from from John. They all, if you combine all yes. the scriptures, you will see a better picture. What happened? Why did this? this this angel rebelled against god how did it all started okay so um, watch that so today we will talk about the reason for teaching you this series okay why this series is important number two the handover and then number three the takeover okay last week what was last week the beginning which is the beginning uh last week was about creation rebellion and formation of counter kingdom yeah okay that was last week this sunday for this today today i mean today we will talk about the reason the handover of that 
kingdom okay uh, uh, how, how did uh, where did satan got his uh his, his authority his influence his rulership or his disposition to 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 have dominion okay that's what we call the handover and then the takeover you know somebody will take over oh. will <laughs> repossess will take away the, that dominion from the kingdom of the the prince of this world so later okay so uh just hold on okay so, <laughs> <laughs> so i want to explain first why this series is important okay listen this series on opposing kingdoms the two opposing kingdoms will prepare us and hopefully curve okay curve the problem on christians betraying each other mm. so now you have an idea why am i teaching pastor arman why are you talking about this topic it's it's december i'm gonna tell you why because this has something to do to do with the future what what is it in the future because we see okay the bible reveals that there's going to be a time of pain emotional pain between brethren in the future that hurts mm. you know i've been a pastor for many many years a and when people leave when people quarrel when people you know things the, the, the even these things happen in a family okay it hurts but this this kind of hurting emotional uh, pain is something greater and deeper okay it was revealed okay so we had a series before uh, entitled signs of the times the last days the, the yes in that uh, the last days, the last days and then si signs of the times okay yes. so we want you to review that uh, if uh, if you're curious now listen to this i only wanted to point on sign of the time number five okay listen to this sign of the time number five okay uh let's read that one uh john uh where, where? Uh, you're looking at uh matthew matthew 24 10. okay this is what jesus said as at that time many will turn away from the faith mm -hmm. and will betray and hate each other mm, you see that at that time many will turn that's that's a sign of the times number five by the way that's number five it says many will turn away from the faith now don't get me wrong this is the lord jesus christ yeah he's saying there's going to be an apostasy uh -huh. so it's not just paul teaching about apostasy in the last days in thessalonians but you can read in Matthew 24, verse 10, it says, Jesus said, many will turn away from the faith. Now, that's the problem. Some of the, 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 the teachers, I mean, Bible teachers, Bible preachers, you know, they teach that this spirit, uh, the apostasy, I mean, the, is, has already happened, is happening, was happen <laughs> happening, even during the pandemic you know they have observed i have observed some but the thing is this there is going to be greater magnitude of this kind of abandoning faith or apostasy in the future okay where it says many will turn away from the faith okay apostasy in other words it means switch sides did you hear that they will switch sides that is why we're teaching you the two opposing kingdoms so that you will not switch side if you're on the other side then switch side to to our side <laughs> <laughs> to god's side and if you're on god's side don't don't <laughs> switch to the other side okay listen many will turn away from the faith they switch sides that's apostasy and who 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 will betray and hate each other that's the thing betraying the brethren is a repercussion of abandoning christ first meaning uh, an indirect consequence 
of living the faith, okay, is the word betrayal. When you live Christ, when you don't remain in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't remain faithful to Him, you will not be faithful to your brethren. So you will no longer be on the same side. If you side on Jesus Christ, anyone on this side, okay, you feel that, you know, you're, you're together, you're, you're on the same thing, same boat, okay? So, so you take care of each other, help each other, right? But if you move on the other side, now the other side is, becomes your enemy. So we're telling you right now that in the whole universe, there are only two sides. God's side or the devil's side. Two sides only. So you have to examine which side are you, okay? So Luke 21, please. Luke 21, verses 16 to 17. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, and sisters, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. See that? Jesus said. <laughs> Sign of the times, number five. You will be betrayed even by parents, well, by brothers, and, and, and sisters. So we, we have this. We have parents. We have brothers. brothers. We have sisters. We have relatives and friends. Okay, verse 16, and friends. And they will put some of you to death. Now, look. I understand that uh, there we have the pre-trib, mid-trib, and the post-trib. We're going to talk about that, but uh, let's put that aside for a moment, okay, at this time. After this series, we're going to talk about that, the, the three sides, uh, the three differing views of the rapture, but that's not our topic. So let's, let's just focus on, on what the scripture says, okay? Um, uh, so why would some parents brothers sisters relatives and friends betray us and put some of you to death okay of course jesus was talking to the jews all right uh, at this point uh, in this particular scripture okay so the answer is in w the why uh, question is uh, answered in verse 17 it says everyone will hate you will hate you because of me because jesus. of jesus Look, meaning anyone siding on Jesus will be persecuted. Anyone siding on Jesus will be betrayed, will experience betrayal. Anyone siding on Jesus will be hated by the world. Do you understand? Okay, so try to think of this. Why would loved ones, brothers, parents, sisters, relatives, friends betray you? Because on they, they, they switch side, okay? They're on the other side. That's why we're teaching you this topic so that you don't make the wrong choice. Okay, when 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 life becomes difficult, more difficult than COVID, I tell you, that's nothing compared to this. When this time and the Bible reveals that this is going to happen. Okay, look. I know you want to know when, why, how, how do we know? Well, that's next week. Okay, that's <laughs> for next week. <laughs> you mean right. next year. Uh, yeah, next year. <laughs> <laughs> that's next year. All right. So th this is why. Okay, verse 18. Let me continue in verse 18. It says, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm. Be faith. Oh, uh, not a hair of your head will perish. Verse 19. Stand firm and you will win life. Okay. Verse 20. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. So what is the point? So this is not about today. Okay. This is something about the future. Okay. Something to do sometime in the future. But I am teaching this topic today while i can because when this time comes we can no longer we're not they're not the censoring will be greater than the censoring of today yeah you have to understand night is coming no one can work 
So now, while it's we still day. we can still see, <laughs> still day, or maybe afternoon already, <laughs> or noon time, I don't know. Let us take advantage to share the gospel and talk about topics that are sensitive while the beast, the Antichrist, is not yet in his place. Let's talk about him, okay? Let's talk about him, and uh, we're not afraid of him. Yeah, amen. We fear God only, okay? His rulership will be for a moment. But Jesus will reign forever and ever and yes. ever and ever. And those Amen. who will side with the Lord Yeshua, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, I tell you, you will live happily ever after. <laughs> but if you switch sides, if you side on the beast, if you side on the Antichrist, if you side with the devil, I tell you, the punishment will also be forever and ever and ever and ever. Torment will be forever and ever and ever. I think we discussed, we read to you the, the scripture two Sundays ago, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we read that to you. So, all right. So, do you understand? Uh, this is not about now. This is about the future. That's why the uh, Jesus said, uh, verse 17, everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Meaning to say, God is there to protect you still. God is there to sustain you. God is there to comfort you. The Holy Spirit is, is there. Amen. To those Christians who are left, who are still here on earth, the time, the believers, the, the, the believers to be, and at that certain time, they became part of the body of Christ. When you are destined to, to be tested, I mean, your faith will be tested. I think we had this topic on endurance, test of endurance. Oh, yes, I think we endurance. mentioned that there. Okay. All right. Uh, you know what? Verse 19 says, stand firm. Jesus said, stand firm or be faithful. Remain on Jesus' side always, friends. Amen. And you will win life. Okay. You will have life. You will find life if you remain faithful and loyal to the Lord Jesus. So, if you're not on God's side right now, well, that's a problem. You can betray the brethren. You have to learn how to be loyal and faithful to your God-given pastors and leaders and disciple makers. That's why I, I, even even my, my pastor, my overseer, my bishop, my spiritual mentor, my spiritual father, uh, Bishop Wesley Russ, I always tell him that, that uh, God, he is a God-given gift to us to oversee spiritually mentor and pray over us uh the, the the maranatha family churches and we're so grateful and we will remain loyal to him because we are loyal to the lord jesus christ amen okay it's hard to find people with the spirit of loyalty but that is our message side on god be loyal to the lord jesus christ amen. because i tell you in this series in this story Satan will lose and Jesus is the winner man. Winner. Yes. <laughs> the victor. The victor is Christ, our Lord. Not the devil. Okay? But he is going to be allowed to anyway, that's not next week. That's next week. Okay, I'm sorry I'm Spoilers. spoiling you. <laughs> All right, so guys, uh when the sign of the times number five happens, okay, about the betrayal thing, you will remember this teaching. Judas exchanged his loyalty to Christ for blood money. Will you do the same? Will you exchange your loyalty to Christ, to your brethren for money and convenience? Will you betray the Lord and your spiritual family in exchange for temporal things? Friends, stay loyal and you will avoid betraying God and the family. So we're teaching you this, this series, so that you know which side to stick. Remain on the right side. Which is the right side? <laughs> side on God. And we are, if you are in Christ and you remain in Christ, you know, you are assured that God is on our side. God is on our side. Okay, so now we are going to read to you scriptures that speaks of Satan's kingdom. Okay, 
Are there scriptures that talks about that Satan has a kingdom now? Because last week we established that Satan is the other ruler. Yeah. He, he is the counter uh, king. All right, so the verse will be Matthew 12. Okay, the Lord Jesus recognizes that Satan has a kingdom. Okay, uh, he has a sphere, sphere of influence. John, can you read that one? Matthew 12. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beel Beelzebub, Beelzebub <laughs> by whom do you your people, people drive them out? So, so then they will be your judges. It's like Jesus was saying, okay, people around us can have more sense to understand that, that Jesus does not drive out devils by the power of the devil <laughs> okay that's stupid that's that's foolishness okay uh verse 28 yeah but if it is by the spirit of god that i drive out demons then the kingdom of god has, has come upon you, you see that the liberating power the freeing power of god <laughs> is the holy spirit Amen. so when the holy spirit comes on you that's power yeah power whom the sun sets when, uh, <laughs> whom the sun sets, sets free, free is free, free indeed. indeed. All right, let's go back. It says, Jesus said, How then can his kingdom stand? Who is this his kingdom Jesus is referring to? The devil. That's the devil. So Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, recognizes that the devil has a kingdom. Okay, he said, How then? Can his kingdom stand? Mm. So Satan has a kingdom, right? Yeah. Because Jesus said Satan has a kingdom. All right? Mm -hmm. so that it's there. But there is power greater than Satan's control. That's the Holy Spirit with us right now. Greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. Okay? So John 12:31. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. See that? Now the prince of this world. D what do we mean by prince of this world? The ruler of this world. Okay? In, in, in Corinthians, I did not include that one. I forgot. In Corinthians, Paul mentioned the God of this world. Mm. When you say the God of this world, and Jesus said the prince of this world in John 12:31. Jesus is recognizing that Satan is the prince of this world. Of this world. He's the ruler. I mean, you say he has a kingdom. He's, he's trying to control people, all right? Trying to cause people to sin and be bondage to sin. So John 16, 11, the last one. John 16, 11? Yes. And, oh. about, and about judgment. Oh, you, you were? Yes, Baba, you know. John. John 16 11 oh okay and about judgment because the, the prince of, or ruler of this world <laughs> now stands condemned okay ruler of this world the world means territorial domain uh -huh. okay so the territorial domain of the devil is the world so Satan has a territory to control yeah. and he makes his laws Okay, which is of course against God. His policy is against God. His goal is against God. Always opposing God in everything. Mm. In everything. Okay, remember that. In everything. He will try to oppose God. Now, uh, Jesus said, now stands condemned. <laughs> wow. That's a declaration. Okay. Because G the devil doesn't know that Jesus will die and will be killed so that he can pay for the sins of the whole world. Okay, so. Amen. Anyway, let's continue. The devil claims dominion. Okay, number two. About the devil claiming dominion or rulership. Over the kingdoms. Of over the world. kingdoms of, of the this world. world. Okay, so uh, let's read that. Luke chapter 4. All right, verses 5 to 8. Mm -hmm. uh, the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. 
If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. That's right. So you see, this is actually the second level of or attempt of the devil to deceive or tempt Jesus to fall into his trap. Okay? Second level. But Jesus never fell to the <laughs> devil's trap. Okay? So let us... Uh, what is the point here? What, where in this scripture does it say that he is the, the, the ruler of this of the kingdom of the world of this world of the world, <laughs> kingdoms of the world so uh, it says in verse 6 and he said to Jesus to him I will give you all authority and splendor okay mm. because the devil showed all the established cities and you know uh, leadership uh, maybe politics whatever and the devil said, it has been given to me. <laughs> Do you read that? Is, mm. is that clear? Verse yeah. 6. Verse, Verse six. 6. Yeah. It, it says, it has been given to me. The devil said, the authority was given to me. <laughs> How did that happen? Who gave him authority? God? No. God didn't give him the authority. Because if you read Genesis chapter 3, okay, we know that the devil stole that dominion from Adam mm. by deceit, okay, by deception. And he said, the Satan said, it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So the devil is claiming dominion. The devil is claiming authority, control, and influence over the kingdoms of the world, over, I mean, say, over the, the nations of the world. Mm. Okay, But he required Jesus to worship him. And that's, again, another deception. Because the Bible says, worship only the Lord your God. Serve so him only, yes. This is a lie. Okay, That's yeah. the masterpiece. That's the weapon of the devil. Always lying. So therefore, Satan formed his own kingdom by what? By deceit. And took it from Adam and Eve. Okay? Deception is Satan's best and most favorite weapon. But using lies or deception, there are three areas that the devil will aim his weapon at. Okay, his weapon of deceit at three areas. Number one, physical appetite or cravings for food. Okay, he got Adam and Eve at level one mm -hmm. about eating the fruit, the forbidden fruit. Okay, diet, 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 diet. <laughs> okay, so anyway, number two, the devil corrupts scriptures or he distorts the truth. Okay, and he planted doubts and suggested. Jesus to commit suicide. Okay? He said, the scripture says, if you jump off, you know, the angels will catch you. He was, it's a su evil suggestion of telling people to commit suicide, to kill themselves. So if there is an unction, okay, in, in, in you, in your thoughts or whatever, or even in the internet or pictures or, or any material that, that, that encourages suicide, that is of the devil that's level two okay number three and then the devil exercises control dominion and slavery okay uh, anyway we're, we're not going to finish so here's the thing here's the point number two this is the what we call the handover okay this is where the so uh, uh, what i mean by this is the surrendered or forfeited or transferred rulership or position of Adam to Satan. It, it's like, uh, uh, so how did Satan got possession of the nations? Of course, it's through deception. Started in Genesis chapter 3. He deceived Adam and Eve to rebel against God. And then sin was passed to all men. So the, you see, the original pandemic is an epidemic, a widespread outbreak of sin. Okay. Uh, Genesis 3, 1 to 6, uh, Luke 4, 6, Romans 5, 
12 to 19. We're not going to read that. Uh, and again, take note, Luke chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, Satan said, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me. So, he said, somebody gave it to him. <laughs> okay, it was transferred, passed on to him because he deceived men and men fell to sin. Uh, meaning to say, Satan won in, in, in the, about that. Uh, incident in the middle in the garden of eden all right so when the when satan says it has been given to me it was passed to me it meant it was surrendered to me but of course we know it was not willingly surrendered to him it was by deceit again this devil is a liar a liar a deceiver okay so which authority which rulership which dominion did Satan uh, uh, took uh, it from from Adam and Eve? Adam's right to rule on earth. Okay, I just I don't know if I gave this scripture to you. Genesis one twenty six to twenty eight. Uh, Do you have it? 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, can you read that one? Then God said, "Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over." Yes. The fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along That's the ground. Right. So you see, rule over. Okay. Yeah. Or, or in King James, let them have dominion over. Mm -hmm. Okay. But do not please, uh, you know, interpret it as so you can rule uh, like God. Okay, it, it's it's there's nothing like it there. That's why the devil said you will be like God. So he, the devil was trying to in, in, entice people to be like God, but that's not the context. <laughs> okay, we mm. will get to that. Okay, uh, mm. Psalms 115. Can you read that one? Oh yes, the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth He has given to mankind. Okay, MSG version. The message. Uh, the message. The heaven of heavens is for God, but He put us in charge of the earth. Okay, another. There's another uh, version. TPT. The heavens belong to our God; they are His alone. All right. But He has given us the earth and put us in charge. Do you understand that? That is what it meant. That th to rule over, to have dominion. Okay, simply means to take care. Mm. Okay, we are stewards. You have to take care of the garden. You oversee the birds, the, the, the every creatures on earth. Okay, mm. it doesn't mean that you be like God to create fish and uh, things like that. Now, there's only one creator and all of us are created beings. We cannot be equal with God. Yeah. Never will be. Why? Because he is creator of created beings. We are just created beings. You have to understand where your place is. The only thing is we are loved by God. Yeah. What is man that you are mindful of him? Wow. Amazing God. So anyway, uh, let go, going back to our topic. So God wants us to rule. God wants us to take dominion. God wants us to take care. God wants us to be in charge, to take to be in charge to, to his creation on earth. That's the rulership. That's the kingdom. That's the dominion. That's the territory that God, the authority that God entrusted Adam and Eve, the first man and woman. But then because they fell to the trap, to the sin, uh, to sin, okay? And then the devil now becomes... The, the 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 ruler the one in charge the one that influences the world so you understand okay now so so we have proven that the bible speaks of two opposing kingdoms in the universe okay which is the kingdom of god versus the kingdom of the devil the sa satan and satan uses puppets like what the bible calls the beast okay in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, we know the beginning and the ending of the story. Okay? I mm. challenge you. Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, 
you will you have an idea about what's happening right now okay and the ending of the story uh, the image represents the four kingdoms that there's going to be four kingdoms and the fourth kingdom on earth which part of what the devil will organize mm. okay so he can bring about or he can you know he can do his evil plans <laughs> his wicked or a rebellious act against God he will taunt God he is going to defy God you read book of Daniel chapter 7 you will understand that he will blaspheme God okay this this beast this 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 the king of the fourth kingdom's little horn that grew and then and, and with big mouth okay uh, but the world will embrace him will like him will worship him yeah because the world will be in need of him because he's <laughs> going to offer he, the, the, this little beast is going to be like the messiah of everyone and that is why the world will accept him and and it's nice to hear what he has to offer but careful be careful because this king okay is against god this king will speak against god and if he will speak against god he will speak against jesus he will speak against christ he will he will chase Christ followers all right so let's let's th so that's the time where people will ch some will switch sides mm. and I hope that this message will get to you ahead of time so that right now you will establish your heart your faith your mind to be faithful and loyal to the one to the God of Israel the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? So, hallelujah. Praise God. So, uh, the beast will be given a short time to rule the kingdom of this world. For a reason, of course. <laughs> and if you want to know the reason, you can read Daniel chapter 9, 24. That is the reason for the tribulation that's going to come on earth. That's going to happen that's in Daniel chapter 9. I, actually, you read the whole chapter. Okay, but but the key point why this you know the, the this catastrophic events will happen that is because yeah um <coughs> okay but the that kingdom of the beast will not last okay so mm. this is the last verse for now and we're going to continue this is about the takeover okay so we already discussed to you the reason why this series is very important why we're teaching this now while we can while we have the time why we want you why we want to establish you in faith and to remain loyal in the lord to to choose the right side to know that there are only two sides okay so we're preparing you for that and the second part we we shared with you that the what was the second part the handover, the handover okay which is the surrendered or forfeited rulership of adam so there was a transference of that dominion on earth and so the bible says jesus said he's the prince of the world so now the last point the last scripture okay is going to be the takeover so this is where you put your hope to into that take over now this is a very encouraging scripture the takeover of ownership okay remember last week he is god is the maker therefore he is the legal owner therefore he is the rightful ruler okay three points last week now we see that there was a, a, a disturbance in 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 the perfect plan and flow of god because you know when god gave volition so that worship is real okay there must be volition uh with the, uh, the angelic host host and, and 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 people but satan decided to rebel against god and we showed you the reason last week so if you missed last week you don't know where that where is that in scripture you know watch our last week episode 
then we know that the devil will rule through a puppet called the beast the little horn mm. for a short time yeah okay after that this is going to happen there is going to be a takeover again take over of ownership the lawful owner will return the return of the king he mm. will return and take possession of what belongs to him okay he is the maker so he will take it back okay he will take it by force Amen. and will actively reign on earth this is what we call the future kingdom the physical literal tangible kingdom of god so it's going to be it's going to reign on earth through the promised messianic kingdom which we call the millennial reign of Christ. We will reign with him for a thousand years. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Side on him. All right. Revelation 11. Last scripture for now. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven, which said the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah. And he will reign forever and ever. Yes. This is it, friends. Hmm. At that time, you have to read the whole book of Revelation to understand there are events that will take place. But I just want to focus on this verse because this verse tells us that this is the time that there's going to be a turnover. Okay? The turnover is actually a takeover. Okay? So there's going to be a turnover which is a takeover. God is going to seize and take control over the nations. Amen. He will conquer the world he will conquer the nations that stands against his father okay so when the father says it's time then it's time yeah. no one knows the the day nor the hour but only when the only the father <laughs> but when he says it's time then vroom, and then whoa he's gonna come okay when the sun <laughs> anyway so um the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ or of his Messiah and he will reign forever and ever so that is the takeover so never lose hope friend just stay on the right side okay don't dwindle don't don't be reluctant stick to the Lord Jesus Christ and I tell you you see the tribulation and Revelation chapter 19 are the various judgments and, and, and other events associated to that okay to with the overthrow of the system of this world remember the image of nebuchadnezzar mm. gold silver uh, iron yeah. and then a mixture of iron and clay which is the fourth kingdom i'm telling you this is that's the system of the world okay but there is the stone okay that will destroy all the kingdoms yes. of this world yes and that's the kingdom of jesus will reign forever and ever so but by the time when jesus will overthrow the system of this world the nations that rebel against god or the nations that sided on that beast on that devil on that world system by the time that the lord has taken care of all the enemies of god then comes the inauguration of the Messiah's rule, meaning to say the millennial kingdom reign will begin and we will reign with him. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So again, guys, that's for today. I hope you learned something. So what's coming next week, next year? <laughs> this is the last <laughs> Sunday for this year. Uh, what's coming? The two opposing kingdoms part three, which is the beast okay we are going to give descriptions that describes the beast or we are going to draw a portrait or a picture of the beast what are the marks the references features prominent attributes of the beast how do we recognize the beast when the beast is revealed if you're still here okay so uh so again the answer is next, next week, week. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we will reveal uh, specific events okay uh, uh, we will enumerate them in our uh, next week 
I mean, to describe the beast. And when the beast comes, okay, so that when the beast comes out of the sin, okay, people will recognize him because he and his ways fits in the description we described to you. But that will be for next, next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> All right. <laughs>